Yeah, here is a very prominent path that they've done. And here it bifurcates into two, so there's in fact quite a few uh, splitting of the paths. And here, what we have here? Here we have a fallen tree. Yeah. So we can see the a bit of the soil composition. The subsoil. Here. The subsoil, yeah. It's this kind of sort of sandy clay. It's very, very fine sand. Yeah. That basically becomes like clay when it's wet, right? You can almost shape it it's and it's mainly sand. Yeah. But you can shape yeah. it and it keeps its shape when it's moist. Yeah. So, very, so very I guess the sand. milk composition must be quite interesting, right? The micronutrient concentration and loads will be quite uh, interesting during the summer season when they graze the forest floor. Yeah, because they're grazing only wild plants, so even grass-fed cows that feed on lay that's been planted, yeah. that's a much uh, smaller range of species, and those species can also have been a bit bred, so yeah. they might have less uh, phyto phytochemicals and uh, lower levels of vitamins and minerals uh, compared to wild plants in the forest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, they also have the, the mountain cow, right? The, what is it called? Fjell Koo. Fjell Koo. They have three different breeds yeah. uh, in the flocks here. Yeah. Uh, quite different in size also. Yeah. Um, so I think their genetics and breeding is quite different because the yeah. mountain cow was bred for both milk and meat and it can actually eat quite a lot of the forest flora naturally. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so this will be quite good to get some samples in the future and actually do studies of the micronutrient loads.